Ukrainian Magura drones effectively destroy Russian Black Sea Fleet ships. Damage to the Black Sea Fleet of the aggressor country of the Russian Federation due to the actions of Magura drones are quite significant. Magura is a Ukrainian naval strike drone that effectively destroys the Black Sea Fleet of the Russian Federation. It is surprising when such a large Black Sea Fleet of the Russian Federation, which seems to correspond, according to Russia, to all the latest words of technology and military science, is destroyed with the help of asymmetric tools. Ukrainian naval Naval drones are just such tools. Already this year, Magura sent a number of Russian ships to the bottom, not only struck, but also destroyed. We are talking about the same Tunnets boats, about Caesar Kunikov, about Sergei Kotov. These are both large landing ships and missile cruisers. The entire fleet of Russian ships was disabled, said Andriy Yusov, Speaker of the Defense Intelligence of Ukraine. According to Yusov, the Ukrainians as a whole managed to disable more than a third of the vessels of the Russian enemy's Black Sea Fleet. This means that the threat of amphibious operations is reduced. The threat of the overall use of the enemy fleet, in particular the caliber carriers, is reduced, he added. The Defense Forces of Ukraine conducted a several-day operation to destroy the logistics that ensured the vital activities of the Russian occupying forces in Crimea. According to Politico, Ukraine is complicating Russia's situation in the illegally annexed Crimea through consistent and regular attacks on facilities on the peninsula. The Economist wrote that Ukraine is gradually defeating Russia in the battle for Crimea. The former commander of US forces in Europe, Ben Hodges, notes that Russia views Crimea as an unsinkable aircraft carrier and during the occupation invested significant resources in building military infrastructure there. Now all of it is under threat. Ukrainian troops staged three-day raid to hijack Russian Tsar tank, Forbes. In early April, Russian paratroopers attacked the positions of the Ukrainian 12th Azov Brigade near Terny, west of Kremenaya in eastern Ukraine. Having been blown up by mines and frightened by Ukrainian UAVs, the occupiers who survived abandoned their equipment and ran away from their positions. This made it possible for the Ukrainian armed forces to receive the trophy. The Russians left behind an almost intact and completely new T-72B3M tank. According to Forbes, it is one of the bulkiest and theoretically most effective anti-drone radio jamming devices anyone has seen in Russia's war against Ukraine. The Azov team spent three days inspecting, repairing and lifting the 51-ton T-72. Two months later, he was repainted and assigned to the same tank battalion that helped kidnap him. This is one of two captured T-72B3Ms that are in service with the 12th Azov Brigade. The Ukrainians nicknamed it Tsar Tank or Tsar Electronic Warfare for its electronic warfare. It had a huge electronic warfare system with additional batteries on the sides tied by cables. Why the Russians piled so much jamming equipment on one tank is obvious. For six months starting in October, Russia-friendly Republican lawmakers in the US Congress blocked further US aid to Ukraine, depriving Ukrainian brigades of artillery shells and anti-tank missiles needed to repel Russian attacks. So the Ukrainians launched a rapid program to build up to 100,000 explosive FPV drones in hundreds of tiny workshops as an intermediate firepower tool. As tiny Ukrainian drones filled the skies, the Russians scrambled to deploy anti-drone capabilities, including jamming capabilities that could block signals. Control of drones explains the publication. The Tsar tank likely represented the zenith of Russian combat drone jamming. It is now known how the operation to kidnap him took place. On the night of April the 3rd, scouts crept up to the tank to inspect it. They found him entangled in barbed wire on an unexploded anti-tank mine. The tank was unloaded because the crew escaped without first turning off the fire control system. 
On the night of April the 4th, the brigade decided to act and steal the tank. The bomb squad and tank crew quietly returned to the T-72 to clear any live explosives, including the mine under the tank, and install new batteries. And already on the night of April the 5th, the time came to take him to the positions of the Ukrainian armed forces. Infantry and drone operators watched from a safe distance. Paramedics and ambulance crew were on standby. The theft itself was carried out by two tank crews with the call signs Beidar and Tenor. They ran up to the T-72, ignoring the nearby Russian artillery salvo, and controlled the tank without turning on the headlights.